Caddis Maximus here. This is just a snap version of how to change a power cord on a skill saw, swap the blade, and check the oil. We're going to do this nice and quick. T30 Torx 30 screws, these two main ones on the right hand side. Four Torx T25 screws in the handle. These two 30s can be very tight. You can also use a large flathead screwdriver if you don't have a Torx uh, driver. Super tight means sometimes they may need an impact, like so. This is a new style, Type 17, so it has these normal type of screws. If you have an older skill saw, it'll just have standard full threaded screws. And there'll be little aluminum collars or sleeves in there. If you have an older skill saw, make sure not to lose those sleeves. Separate the two handle halves like so. That easy. The screw holding the switch is a T20. The screws holding the uh, power cord crimp are T15s. Remove those. Always use 14 gauge or 12 gauge with uh, a skill saw because of the 13 amp motor and the high currents that it pulls, especially during cutting operations. I have a pre cut cord. There's a little bit of extra space in the handle, but you'll want at least two and a half inches to say three inches of wire with approximately the last three eighths of an inch or uh, a little bit less to crimp on some ring terminals. And I strongly recommend you crimping on some terminals or at least twisting the wire up, putting it into a small loop like so and then soldering it. But you just can't take these bare wires and then try to get them to hide under the head of the screw on the power switch. That just won't work out for you. It'll just f basically want to pull out and there's no way to get it a good enough contact. So you're going to have to either crimp on a terminal or solder it. The ground screw is a T20. The two screws that hold these terminals onto the switch are T15s. By the way, it's not advised that you drag and your tool around and hang it by the power cord for reasons like this. As you can see, this totally just tore off and probably made a nice little shower of sparks. Put the strain relief on very first and make sure that the wide end is facing the exposed wires. It's really unfortunate when you uh, get it all assembled and then you realize that you forgot to put on the strain relief. If you are using ring terminals, make sure that you crimp all the way. That's what's nice about these ratcheting crimpers is they ratchet and they will only release when you've actually squeezed tight enough and then that's how you end up getting it. And if you get nice crimpers, then you get these really nice crimps, which are proper. They properly crimp the wire across two half moons as well as pinch the back plastic to act as a strain relief. Optimally, you cut the wire so that a little bit of the insulation will sit right inside this little gap here so that that strain relief pinch actually has effect. Many times ring terminals that will accept 16 or 14 gauge wire are just a little bit too big to fit in these uh, little recesses for the switch. So in this case I had to use forks, but, it, but generally you don't want to use the forks, you do want to use a circular terminal because obviously uh, it's a holds on just a little bit better. It's easier to get the cord in place and then get the record retention bracket cinched down first. That way that you don't have to worry about the cord slipping around as you're screwing in your terminals. Secondly, when you install this retention bracket, get both screws started and then go a little bit on each one so you're rocking it down nice and even rather than just crushing it all on one side and then swinging the other side down. It'll be just a little bit easier. Rescrew it on the switch, put on your ground terminal connector, make sure it's bent in just a little bit, it goes to this little channel or you can run it up through here. Make sure it's not uh, kind of sticking out right at the back here because it can be frustrating getting the two halves of the handle back together. And then reassemble, just make sure the wires aren't crossing over any of the handle areas, particularly right back here where it kind of does want to get up into these two halves and not over the screw bosses and just put the handle back on. When reassembling the handle, get all the screws loosely started and then cinch down the four screws so the two handles, halves of the handle, get squished together before you tighten down the main screws. 
replacing the blade. Super simple. You have a button on scale saws and all circular saws have some kind of a blade lock. You actually press and hold it and then turn the blade until the button actually pushes all the way in just like so. And then half inch wrench turn counterclockwise. That would be righty loosey. And this was actually barely tightened on there at all. Unthread this. Some people like to put the, the guard down because it may be easier. Pull this off. Older versions had two little uh, dogs to drive this. Newer versions have the square. That's another way to tell. Put the guard up. Pop this blade out. It's a good idea to make sure that's seated all the way. Take the other blade. Make sure you knock out the diamond for the skill saw and then reassemble. Checking the oil is super simple. Make sure the guard's all the way up. Set it on the edge of something. Fortunately, checking the oil is super simple. Set it on the edge, make sure the shoe is up. Also the half inch, the same half inch size that you change the blades with. Just get a wrench and then this bolt is normal, so it's lefty loosey and it's not really very tight. There's a little O-ring under it. What makes these so simple is that they're just filled up until it runs out. And so all you have to do is pull it out, shine a flashlight in there, and then see if the oil level's low. If it's really low or below the bottom of the hole, you definitely need to add some. Places like Harbor Freight and uh, even Home Depot used to sell heavy skill saw oil, but it takes a very heavy and extremely heavy oil. A very heavy gear, gear oil. And you just fill it up until it reaches the very edge of the threads or just straight up starts to run out. And then put the cap back in. Once you have it all got back together, make sure that uh, everything works good. Okay, now you're done fiddling around with the saw and should probably get back to work. Once again, <laughs> I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.